So in this first lesson, we're going to learn how to make resource cards like you might find in Settlers of Catan. If you're anything like me and come from the art world, spreadsheets are very much a foreign sort of idea. But now that I have touched them a little bit, they're a little bit less intimidating. Uh, so first, I want to uh, talk you through the very, uh, very basics of setting up a spreadsheet for uh, for a card design. First thing you want to do is, of course, uh, name your uh, name your spreadsheet. Uh, in this case, we're going to call this resource cards. And uh, you can have several sheets within the same file, uh, and, and you may start using these if you have, for example, uh, several decks of uh, cards within the same game, and in which case you'd probably just change the name of this document to the game name and then have each spreadsheet refer to a different deck of cards. Uh, but for our purposes, we're just going to call this just sheet one because it's the only sheet that we're going to have. The key thing to know about spreadsheets and card design is that each row represents one card while every column represents individual variables that are going to be on those cards. We're going to call this column resources. Now, when you're setting up a spreadsheet for, uh, for card design, the first row is going to be the name for that column. So to make sure that doesn't get mixed up with anything else, I always freeze that row. So I go to view, freeze rows, and I select freeze row one. So under the resources uh, column, let's just type wheat, stone, and sheep. So for now, these are just going to be text variables. There's no images here, there's no art. First, I wanted to show you exactly how a spreadsheet uh, gets linked into InDesign and how you can make it a variable card deck. So I'm going to download this. And I'm going to download this as a CSV. Uh, any of these other formats are not going to work for, for InDesign's data merge. So just click on CSV. And when you're saving your files for your project, uh, whether, uh, whether you're saving your spreadsheet uh, or your images, you want to keep them all in the same folder. I like to keep everything in a folder called support. Now let's go to InDesign. We're going to create a new document. And I have a preset here called card uh, that is two and a half wide, two and a half inches wide, three and a half inches tall. And I set up a column uh, grid of six columns, an eighth of an inch bleed, eighth of an inch margin. Okay, got it. Make sure I don't have facing pages turned on. Sometimes I will use a primary text frame, but it's usually more of a hassle than, than need be. This is only going to be one page uh, because uh, all we're placing here are uh, variables. So let's see how that looks. Okay, so we have a very small um, InDesign document here. Let's just drop one text window here. Uh, I'm using my text tool, which you can find here. I'm just going to type something. Uh, let's just type uh, sheep. I haven't set any new styles or anything, but um, by default, I've got I've got a font set up uh, to Minion Pro. Uh, say I want to make that something a little bit different. Say I want that to be italic. So I choose italic. Okay. And you can see um, I've got six columns set up: one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. Uh, those are not at all related to the columns in a spreadsheet, and, and hopefully that's that's obvious. But uh, just to be clear, they have no relation. All these columns are are just uh, layout guides, uh, basically. So I know exactly about halfway, if I need to make a text frame that's halfway across the card, then I can do that here very easily. But I'm gonna just make this uh, go across the whole card. I'm going to center that. And here's a little trick I like to use whenever I'm creating a text frame for a card, uh, especially if it's a title. Uh, I'll go to Object, Text Frame Options. I'll set the alignment to center and just click on preview so I can see how this looks. And you'll see that instead of the text being aligned to the top, it's aligned to the center. So that uh, no matter how wide or how, how many how many words I put into the text frame, it's always going to be centered within uh, centered vertically within that um, uh, text frame. Uh, there are some other things you can do. Uh, you can set this to the bottom and always have text rise from the bottom of the text frame, which can be handy if you have text at the bottom of your card. But for now, I'm just going to center this. Now, here's how data merge works. Uh, if you don't have data merge in your uh, panels already, 
Uh, I, I always have data merge set up right at the very top since I use it so often. But if you don't have it already, uh, you can find it under utilities, data merge. And data merge is a funky uh, little tool because it has this tiny, tiny text that you can barely read and it's not exactly intuitive. Um, but uh, all you're doing is basically importing uh, in a the, the spreadsheet like you would an image, except um, the way you do it is by clicking on this uh, context menu here at the very, very top on the right. You select data source and go to your folder that had your spreadsheet. So resource cards, sheet one, CSV, selecting that. And you'll see there is a, a line item here in the, in the window now called resources. That is called resources because we named that column resources. So I'm going to select this word and I'm going to click on resources. And you'll see that the word has been replaced with this tag. And every time I click on this, even just once, just one cursor, it's going to automatically select this entire word, uh, this entire placeholder, and also uh, select uh, resources in the data merge panel. Now, uh, what this represents is the variable uh, resources, the column that we set up in the spreadsheet. And uh, whatever words we put underneath, say wheat, stone, sheep, those are going to appear here instead once we actually start previewing this. And so I click on preview and voila, we have wheat. If I uh, click the next page over here, if you see this uh, little uh, arrow, suddenly the word changes to stone. Next page, uh, that's sheep. Now you'll note that the page number hasn't actually changed. We're still on page one. All we're doing is previewing the variables that, uh, that may occur. If you want to get a sense of what this looks like uh, when it's uh, a little bit more finished, uh, I'm clicking on W to hide every, everything, all the guides, all the bleeds and everything. So again, very plain and straightforward. This just says wheat and each card will have a different title. So that's very straightforward. Um, if you actually want to export this into a document that has each card on a separate page, you would uh, click on this little button on the bottom of the data merge panel that says create merge document. And you get this uh, kind of complicated dialog box. Um, but what you want to make sure of is that you have selected all, rec uh, all records. It refers to every uh, uh, row in the spreadsheet as a record. So you want to record them all, uh, or you want to include them all. Um, you want to uh, make all of them go to one page. Uh, if you have any text uh, in, the, in, a, in any cell that will be overset, that is, if there's too much text to fit within this text frame, uh, if you have this selected, uh, in, uh, InDesign will create a text report for you to tell you that there there has been an error when it, when uh, this document exports. Uh, it will also alert you if there's any images missing, but we don't have any images just yet. Uh, still, it's important to have that checked too. So I'm going to click OK, and I get a little a report saying that no overset text was generated when merging the records. That makes sense because uh, these words are very short, and this text window uh, text frame is very big, so I, I wouldn't expect to. Uh, see anything. And you'll note our original document is still here. This is a brand new document that has three pages. Each one is a separate card. The first card says wheat, the second card says stone, the third card says sheep. And this is how you would uh, basically export an entire deck. So if you would imagine, for example, uh, say I wanted to uh, make nine cards. I'm just going to copy these twice, three times. So now I have nine cards. Download again, save that. I'm going to save over this old spreadsheet. Going back to InDesign, I'm going to close the, uh, the document that I just generated that has uh, all everything broken out because it's no longer valid. I want a document that has nine cards, not just three. And uh, I go to the links palette uh, and you will see in the links palette that uh, this item has been modified. So all I do is update link in this little button over here. Um, and I just update that. And now the CSV has been updated in InDesign. Uh, and I can prove this by, uh, again, previewing page four, page five, page six, page seven, page eight. 
h9. Make sense? All right. I would just, again, uh, create a merge document. Click OK. No overset text was generated. Great. Go back to pages. And I see that there are nine individual pages in this document. It's wheat, stone, sheep, wheat, stone, sheep, wheat, stone, sheep. Now say you actually wanted to include images in this. If you're looking for uh, art to use in your uh, prototypes, I would highly recommend going to Flickr and searching in their Creative Commons. Uh, there are other resources available to you too. Uh, Gameicons.net is a site that has images that uh, are very much oriented towards uh, gaming. So you'll find stuff here on all sorts of subjects. Uh, you name it, uh, there are icons here that, that will uh, suit your needs. Uh, the Noun Project has all sorts of uh, cool icons, <laughs> including a collection of mustaches here. Um, but they have all sorts of stuff, and they're much more uh, generalized, uh, designed for universal uh, iconography uh, for communication. Uh, let's go back to the spreadsheet. Now, uh, InDesign's kind of weird uh, in that if you're going to make a variable that is an image on the card, you have to name the column uh, first with at symbol. Let's call this image. And here is where you would put the name of the image. So for example, wheat.jpg. Now looking at your support folder, you want to make sure that the names of the images that you're putting into the spreadsheet match the names of the files that you actually have available. And these are the images that you'll be calling upon to make a variable image. Uh, now in this case, I've made this file name lowercase. It is unfortunately case sensitive, so uh, you got to keep track of this kind of stuff. So I'm going to make sure that this is lowercase wheat. Make sure that's lowercase stone and lowercase sheep. Once again, I'm going to copy paste this. I am going to download this, replace the uh, existing CSV that I have there once again in the support folder. Going back to InDesign, going to update the link. Now, uh, before we'll see what this looks like when I preview it, uh, you'll note that resources uh, is on the page, and it's even noted here that it's on page one uh, on the on the right side here. Uh, but image doesn't have a anywhere for the image variable to go. Uh, so when I click on preview, nothing's going to appear in this image because there's no placeholder for the image. So first I have to create a, uh, a frame for the image. I'm going to make that a full bleed. So it's going to extend outside the edge of the card. And while I have this uh, frame selected, I'm going to select image. And you'll see that the image suddenly pops into frame. Uh, once again, I'm going to click on W so I can hide all of the guides and everything so you can see and get a better sense of what this card will look like. So you'll see uh, um, we're previewing right now card number nine. That's page nine. Going back to page one, you'll see that we have an image of wheat, stone, sheep. Wheat, stone, sheep. Now let's say you wanted to make a card that actually had variable quantities of a resource on each card. So for example, uh, you want it to have three sheep or four wheat or, or whatnot. Let's go back to the spreadsheet. Now let's call this rank or number, whatever you want to prefer. Now again, this is a text variable, so I'm not going to put that, that at sign there. That is only if you're making a variable image in the card. And let's just call this uh, all these one. Let's call these two. Let's call these three. Downloading that CSV, I'm going to save over the existing spreadsheet. Go back to InDesign. I'm going to update the link. And you'll note that if you're in preview mode, when you update the link to the spreadsheet, the preview mode will be turned off. So let's preview again. And again, we're not going to see the rank until we actually apply uh, this variable to an actual text, uh, text frame. Uh, so for example, let's say we wanted to make a text frame right here on the corner. I like to just type something in and type a, a number or, or type a word beforehand and start adjusting the, uh, the font size and things before I start applying a variable to it. Uh, I find it just a little bit easier to deal with uh, so I don't have to worry about, about both things at once. Uh, once I'm comfortable with the size of a word or, na or a name or, or some kind of stat, uh, then I'll select it and apply uh, the variable, in this case rank. And there you go. Uh, you'll see that uh, this is now active because you can see the page number on the right. And you'll see that right here, this is two sheep. Let's go back to page one. You'll see that this is one wheat, one stone, one sheep, 
two wheat, two stone, two sheep, three wheat, three stone, three sheep. Now, uh, you don't have to actually put a variable in a separate uh, text frame. For example, I'm going to cut this. I'm just going to delete that text frame. And let's put this whole shebang in one text frame. I'm pasting. Let's look at this, how this looks outside of preview mode. Now, outside of preview mode, this looks, uh, it looks like uh, there's, just, there's this is going to be huge. It's never going to fit in the text frame. That's only because uh, this is how InDesign represents uh, text placeholders when you're doing a variable, which is also why I like to do this kind of stuff uh, outside of preview mode at first and, and then start applying variables while, uh, while I'm in preview mode. So I'm going to select all this. I'm going to align it to the left so that uh, no matter what, you'll be able to read this from the corner of the card if you're fanning out the cards. I'm going to hit preview. Uh, now you see that there's some overlap here between the text and the image. I'm just going to nudge down this image so that it bleeds off the bottom. Now let's go back to page one. And you see some of the variables that we have here. Uh, we have one wheat, one stone, one sheep, and so on. Now taking this a step further, uh, you can have uh, multiple placeholders for the same variable. So for example, if you were to just copy and paste this entire text frame, you'll see that over in the data merge panel that there are now two placeholders noted for resources and two placeholders noted for rank, both appearing uh, on page one. If you look at this outside of preview mode and look at the whole text frame, uh, you'll see that there are in fact two text frames, each of them identical, each of them have rank, each of them have resources. Let's reduce this back down to its original size, go back to preview. And this is one way that you can set up a uh, ambidextrous layout. So say I were to take, uh, so let's say, let's say we uh, create a merge document. Uh, again, keeping all those settings, no overset text was generated when merging records. Um, what I do, if I need to save this document, I rarely do, but if I ever do, um, I will uh, just name it something like uh, resource cards and renders. Uh, mainly just to show that this is not the original source document that has the uh, data merged uh, spreadsheet, because as you'll see here and on the data, in the uh, data merge panel, the spreadsheet is not linked at all. Uh, and in fact, uh, all of the images that we've linked are now uh, linked multiple times across the entire document. Whereas when you're looking at the original document over here, you'll see the only link is actually the spreadsheet. Uh, we only see any other links when we go to preview mode, in which case only the one image that appears on that preview page uh, will appear in the links palette. So let's turn off preview there, go back to our rendered, uh, rendered document. Now uh, you can save this as a PDF, you can save these as flat JPEGs and put them into a, a uh, print and play document if you like. Uh, but this is the very basic uh, use of data merge. And it's something that I do all the time. Um, and I highly recommend that you familiarize yourself with this if you're going to uh, do any kind of uh, large deck layout, even small decks, uh, can it can make this really handy uh, and make uh, creating an entire deck of cards a lot more efficient than editing each card individually. So I hope this was uh, useful. Uh, and in the next lesson, we're going to learn a little bit more about how to make a deck of playing cards. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and support the rest of this series on Patreon.